So what is quantum physics? Well, quantum physics was brought about about a hundred years ago or so, um, and it came to being because we realised that we couldn't explain a number of phenomena using the classical laws of physics. So in classical physics, think about baths, and your children in the bath and you have rubber ducks. That's how we thought of particles um, in classical physics terms. They were like the rubber ducks, they were discrete, they'd bump into each other and bounce off. But in quantum physics, we introduced a new concept of wave-particle duality. So instead of those rubber ducks, we were thinking about matter as made up of waves. When you splash in the bath, the waves appear. And when you look at the waves, they're in more than one place at once. They spread across the surface of the bath. When they interact with each other, they add to each other and subtract from each other. So quite a different way of thinking about matter. Quantum technology for the future is all about what we nowadays call quantum 2.0, where we make use of the particle wave duality and allow particles to behave as waves uh, and let them interfere and interact uh, in different ways than we're used to in the classical sense. DSTL and the MOD in general have always been interested in this, but in particular in transferring that science into real technologies, into, into usable devices and, and techniques and technologies. And uh, back in 2013, uh, DSTL in conjunction with the Royal Society pulled together everybody who was working in this area uh, at Chichley Hall at a meeting uh, and what came out of that was a landscape, a quantum technology landscape document that DSTL published. So we brought together the whole of the quantum community from across the UK, around about 120 people, and we explored the implications of that wave-particle duality. If we could harness that science, what could we do with it? What would that mean for defence and security? Effectively, we laid down a roadmap that took us from the basic science in the laboratory through to the end application in defence. How would you exploit and use those quantum effects? The broad technology initiative allows us to capture all the resources from nanotechnology, from additive manufacturing, from laser uh, technology, bring them together uh, and the DSDL funding allows us to push them together into a system. So that's really making the system work and making a very pr um, useful end product uh, which can then show the benefit to end users. EPSRC, Innovate UK, uh, DSTL and NPL and, and, and other partners put in a bid to the government uh, saying here's a new area it's speculative still, there isn't an industry yet, but there's a real chance for the UK to get in on the ground floor and create an industry. And the, uh, the Chancellor believed us. Uh, he accepted the idea and announced that he was going to invest 270 million of new money into what became the National Quantum Technology Programme. DSDL plays a crucial role here uh, because on one side they have been informing of course the overall national quantum technology strategy and being key architects of that. Uh, on the other hand uh, they also provide funding for spikes in technology development I would call them. What I've brought today is the essential resource for all called atom quantum technologies. It's creating the atoms which are our quantum particles uh, in a very controlled way, holding them nearly at standstill at a very well-defined position. Uh, that then enables us to use them at na as nature-given perfect probe particles. So from the work that we'd done with the landscape, we identified a number of key areas that quantum could have benefits to um, us in defence. The two most important, and this is where our programme is focused, is firstly to build a gravity sensor. That will allow us to detect changes in density of materials. So for example, we could see the difference between earth and rock and then a tunnel underneath by sensing the changes in gravity. For us in defence that has a number of very big implications. The second area is around navigation. Currently most of our navigation systems rely on GPS but GPS has vulnerabilities to space weather or even to being jammed or interfered with. And in fact, if you can't access GPS underground or underwater, then your systems do not work. Our aspiration is to produce a navigation system that operates completely independent of space. Now, both of those matter for us in defence, but of course, you can see the civil applications too. This next generation of quantum technology we're aiming for right now um, and which will have huge implications in the future, allowing us to look into the ground for new resources, to fix all the pipes and cables uh, which are uh,
places are not really known at the moment, which costs about five billion pounds to the UK economy every year to dig up and find out where they are when they put in the next generation broadband, for example, to look into the brain, to look into uh, dementia research, to build uh, inertial navigators, to possibly uh, do navigation and replace GPS-based navigation in the future, which is a huge market already, 8% of the UK uh, economy. Um, so there's another opportunity coming up right now and doing this innovation and making sure we can create the benefit for the UK economy. That's a large part of the quantum technology hub and of course the DSDL projects we're running in there.